Are you at home cooking with rusty, dusty pans and pots? Well, you should be ashamed of yourself, young man, because you got to F with the hex clad, okay? Now, check it out. We got these hex clad pots and pans at home, and we love it non-stick, dishwasher safe, and they just look so sexy and fancy. Hex clad six-piece set is the perfect starter set. Mm. Hex clad six-piece set is the perfect starter set to enjoy the incredible versatility of their products. The set features three of their most popular pans with an accompanying lid that can handle all of your pan cooking needs, whether it's eggs, burgers, steaks, or sauces, your kitchen will never be the same. And if you're interested, it's time to get people talking about something other than that smell coming from behind your stove, because it stinks! For a limited time only, our <laughs> listeners get 10% off your order with our exclusive link. Just go to hexclad.com slash dudes. Support our show and check them out at hexclad.com forward slash dudes. Bon appetit, mon chéri. Let's eat with Hexclad's revolutionary cookware. Ha, ha, ha. My friends, HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. Come on, so easy. With so many in-season ingredients, you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of HelloFresh's chef crafted, craft, crafted recipes. Produce travels from the farm to your door for peak ripeness you can taste. Okay? Now check it out. Me and Chia, we got two babies running around. Well, one is crawling, but the other one's running around, so we don't have time to be grocery shopping, looking up recipes, doing all that. That's why HelloFresh comes in handy. It saves us so much time, and it's always delicious, okay? So you should go to HelloFresh.com slash 50dudes and use code 50dudes for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. One more time. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50dudes and use code 50dudes for 50% off plus free shipping. America's number one meal kit. <laughs> it, 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 dudes! Behind the foods, yo, it's the dudes. Behind the foods, the dudes. Behind the foods, yeah, it's the dudes. Behind the foods. That's actually really fucking good. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's fucking go. It's the one hundredth episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. <laughs> Say, can okay. you see, see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on cringe talk, huh? I was just trying to, I was trying to find it, dude. I couldn't find it. Hey, man, you got it, dude. You got it. And the rocket's reckless. We started way too high, man. This is my fault. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Oh, my God. What a treat. What a day. What an occasion. We have done 100 episodes. Wow, dude. And as a special treat, David So. Oh, whoa. For those of you just listening, David just did a fire ass arm wave. <laughs> Uh, oh, 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 and I'm bringing it back. Oh, whoa. whoa. Um, I was looking at our Uber wow. Eats options and I saw blood souls pop up. I didn't wow. realize it would be an option. Uh, and I was like, oh, what better way to celebrate with some than with some good old American barbecue. Bar -B -Q. Sorry, vegan Robin Couch, but we're about to eat some motherfucking animals right now. <laughs> we killing it all. <laughs> it's okay. I accepted that fate when I saw the barbecue bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's the 100th episode, so, you know, yeah. we not going to eat no vegan bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not guilt tripping us, Robin. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Thank love you. you. Love you too. Well, first of all, let's... let's um. I was I was literally about to buy a fucking like three hundred dollar no, no. three hundred dollar bottle of Ace of Spades, but like two things happened, right? One thing was I don't think the Bebmo lady knew what the fuck I was talking about because I was like, "Dude, would you happen to have a bottle of Ace of Spades that's like chilled right now?" And she was like, "Hmm, chilled. Um, did you walk into? Did you did you take a look into the walk in to see maybe if it's in there?" I'm like, "Yeah, not in my head. I'm like, you're not gonna have Ace of Spades just in the fucking walk in with the yeah. with the beers. You know what I'm saying?" Yeah, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I went to go look. The shit wasn't there, of course. But there was this 
apple beer. <laughs> Lindemann's apple beer. And I thought apple beer would go fire with this barbecue I just ordered. I like everything. Okay. <laughs> I'm, oh, there's a, oh. Wow. How about that? Whoa. There's a motherfucking cork. Cork in here, dude. Wow. Oh, so fancy, my friend. Oh, wow. There's a cork in my Lindemann's apple flavor beer. Oh, you fucking I went cholo <laughs> with it. I do. <laughs> my my Frenchman turned into a cholo, dog. Now, I saw this video the other day that had me in tears crying because you know how people always try to do motivational speeches, <laughs> but they don't be fucking thinking out what the fuck they're saying. Yeah. And I get it. Like you went through some, like it had you had an epiphany. <laughs> you just got out of jail and now you want to teach people real life lessons, <laughs> but you got to think out what you're going to say before you say it. Yeah. And there's this cholo that comes up and you could tell he's fresh out of prison, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, dog. Like today, fuck, I'm here to fucking, I want to be that pert. Okay, so fucking, hey, life is fucking hard, eh? <laughs> Just, he kept stumbling over his word for a fucking one minute video. Aww. And I'm like, bro, you could have just thought it out before you hit record. Poor guy. And he's just, he has it on the floor and it's angled down. He's still in his fucking cholo shit. <laughs> hey man, fuck, because you know, sometimes fucking, I just got out. <laughs> like, damn, this is going so bad. But. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! I love you, God! I'm gonna pour a little one for Robin Couch as well. Here you go, Robin Couch. No, Robin Couch, Thank come you. come in here and drink and, and, and toast this shit with us. Okay. And then pour it in your butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna drink it out of the crack of your ass, Robin Couch. <laughs> oh, perfect. Eh, I like it better dirty. But yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I like it stinky and... Robin Couch right in the middle, please. Full of dingleberries. Oh, <laughs> dingleberry juice. Okay. Oh, let me put this uh, so they can... Oh, Ooh, it yes. kind of it kind of smells like weed. Oh, because of the hops. Yeah. <laughs> hops. Cheers. Hey, Cheers. To 100 episodes. Thank you, Robin Couch, for being back there and hooking us up. Mm. Cheers. Unnecessary slurp, but okay. Mm -hmm. Always necessary slurp. It has like a weed taste to it. Does it? Kind of, huh? I'm not getting weed. Oh, oh it's probably because of the the, uh, the the barley from the. I don't know. I don't know about beer. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, local barley. Okay, well, maybe. Shit. All right, get the fuck out. Get, be, get back to work. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Monitor Sorry. this stuff. <laughs> 100 episodes and I'm out. 100 episodes and you cover your butt. How dare you? <laughs> She's getting comfortable out here. You uh, think thought she was sweet? Robin Carrots, get back there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you make eye contact with me in here? I am the captain now. <laughs> I am the captain now. All right, and of course, man, look, Blood Souls Barbecue. I ordered a big ass platter of barbecue. So, for Blood Souls has been around. It has been like an LA staple for the longest time. Yes, there are other great, great barbecue spots, but there are certain things that hit because it's just been around. Started in Compton. Uh, the first Blood Souls was there. It started by this man right here. Um, I do believe he was just selling plates of barbecue, and then it, it started popping off, and now the Compton one is closed down, and you have, you have this one right here. By the way, that makes me sad because I was, me, Bart, and Joe, and everybody, between JK News, we would go straight to the Compton one. Mm -hmm. A little of the ghetto. Well, you know. A little hood. But it tasted but great. That's how you know the food is fire. Because when you got... The whitest food critic in Compton ordering some barbecue. You know it's delicious. Mm. Oh, cornbread. Very delicious. It's a whole feast, bro. We got cornbread. We got sides. Oh. Um, it's a whole plate, pl plate of all the different meats. I'm traveling to the south right now. Potato salad. I'm in the bayou. I'm here with my three wives. <laughs> Two of them are my cousins, but they're hot. They look nothing like me. But they're twice removed, so technically it's okay. Hey, you know, let me ask you this, dog. You got a lot of cousins? I do, but they old as fuck. Oh, okay, because I, I I don't have a any cousins over here. Like, all my cousins are like 10 years older than me. And they're all in Asia. But, yeah, well, the ones that live out here are like 10 years older. All my all my age, close in age cousins are in Thailand. Yeah. But I've, I've had the homies, I think, who was it, Petey Flo or somebody, you know, He's Mexican and Peruvian. He has so many cousins out here, you know. So he said he'll be at like some family functions sometimes. And be like, "Yo, who is that? Oh, oh hey, who's that? They're like, that's your fucking cousin, fool." Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what part though? Is it another family or different? Yeah, I mean, look. If we don't share blood, oh, if we don't if we don't share blood, then we're sharing other juices you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know what i'm saying i don't know how that works right is that still okay because you're not related at all if it was me 
and I saw a very hot cousin that was not blood. Um, I, I might, I might find a way to to secretly. Is that it's okay though, right? Feel each other up because I always feel weird. Like I never understood how. So I knew of somebody, right? Let's use that bag as a little okay, a little juice in there. You didn't care, all right? I'm, I'm tipping it this way because. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah, the, I knew somebody who uh, they went to high school with their uh, step sibling because their parents met because they work at the same like dental office okay. and they eventually started dating and they actually got married eventually. But then this person that's now their step sibling, right, is hot. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, am I, is it weird for me to find my step? And they went to the same high school. Wow. So I was like, you know what? I don't know. When was the last time you watched Wolf of Wall Street? I actually never seen it. What? Oh man, it's on Netflix right now. You have to watch I know. it. So you mentioned that, right? So it's on there. I'm, I have it in queue for this weekend. I'm gonna watch it by myself. Dog, it might be one of my um, favorite like movies of the past like 10 years. No, everybody know? says it's amazing and I, people shit on me all the time. They're like, you watch movies, but you haven't seen Wolf of Wall Street. It was just one of the ones I missed because it was probably during the time I was super busy. Dude, it's so fucking good. And um, so this conversation reminds <laughs> me of um, when Leonardo DiCaprio uh, and Jonah Hill's characters are, are speaking mm-hmm. for the first time. They're kind of like getting to know each other. And Leo's like, hey, man, like, I don't know. I've, I've, I've heard some stuff about you. Like, you just hear shit. And Jonah Hill's character's like, what, what, what? Like, what? Like, what? And Leo's like, oh, I heard something about you, like, marrying your, your cousin or something. And Jonah Hill's character's like, ah, yeah. People just, you know, man, like, people talk shit. Like, yeah, I married my cousin or whatever. But yeah, you know. <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, yeah, you know, like, you know, you, you you have a cousin growing up, and you, and you know, yeah, my cousin's fucking hot, but and then you got all these, all these fucking guys coming up trying to, trying to fuck your cousin, but it's like, I, I'd, I'd rather be the one fucking my cousin than these, than these like random dudes I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? And the whole like, so watching Wolf of Wall Street, man, for me, I don't want to tell you too much about it because like, it's it's so good. Um, it inspires me as someone who's trying to write m- more movies and stuff because there are so many scenes that are so good just because of the conversations they're having. Mm. Um, and it's like, it doesn't need to be a whole lot of shit going on, but it's literally just them talking and like, it's so like funny. And um, so we just got to get on that level, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard yeah. though. It's amazing writing, huh? Everybody it's, was talking it's, about. it's so good. And and the story itself, even though, yeah, it's like, he's, he's a fucked up character. It, it, it low key, high key inspires me. Um, but uh, yeah, man, you need to watch. I don't want to talk I about will. it anymore. It's so it's so good. Would you like to know some of the incest laws? Because I googled it. Um, yes, sure, Robin Kelly. No, I'm married, so it doesn't matter. Let's <laughs> talk about it. So laws may prohibit sexual relations not only between blood relatives, but also between certain people who are not blood relatives, such as adopted parents and children, step parents and step children, of course, and foster parents and foster children, of course, close cousins are covered under this law, but distant cousins may not be. Interesting. Unless they live in yeah, the Woody same Allen. household like siblings. Interesting. Didn't Woody Allen marry his fucking uh, step, uh, uh, his adopted child, you sick fuck? Adop- yeah, 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 yes, yeah he and he's still working. What yeah. the fuck, man? Yeah. yeah. So wait, Rumor. What, what, is, what is a close cousin compared to a not close cousin? I would assume a close cousin is like a first cousin and maybe, it doesn't specifically say, but I would say maybe like a first or second cousin and then third and fourth after that is probably a distant cousin. I'm not or even sh- It could be just first cousins and then second, third is distant. I don't know. I'm not even sure how that shit works, man. Like first, mm. first cousin, second cousin, all that shit. This is honey butter. Oh, it sure the fuck is. Let's get it. Huh? <laughs> it sure the fuck is. <laughs> All right, one second. Mm. I'm going to get some honey butter, and I'm also get some motherfucking meat. Mm, Pause. <laughs> honey butter is so whipped honey, whipped butter, salty, sweet, creamy. Jesus Christ, man. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm, sir. I'm sorry if you were, like, on a diet trying to get sexy for your wedding. I've already lost a total of seven pounds. Oh, good for you, dude. And today I gained it all back. <laughs> mm. Well, it's the 100th episode, man. We have to go crazy. This is a, a food podcast, dog. <laughs> I'll just uh, run today. That's all good. Mm-hmm. I'll work mm-hmm. soft. You don't need to earn your food, David. Uh, I have a caloric deficit I have to be <laughs> in in order to lose a pound a week. So if I go over it, it ruins that. And I've already clocked in 1,000. Mm-hmm. And I'm at 2,000. And this is about to be fucking like 3,000 calories. Let's go. You don't need to earn your food is all I'm going to say. <laughs> you don't earn your food, but you have to have a caloric deficit to lose weight. 
All right. <sighs> this conversation makes me tired. <laughs> In order to lose weight, caloric deficits work. It's the law of thermodynamics, people. Um, and I'm about to eat about 4,000 calories. So what are you going to do tomorrow when you do this Gio's birthday situation? What are y'all doing? What are you, I'm sure you're going to be eating some fucking fire food and I'm drinking. I'm just going to portion control better. Mm -mm -mm. You know what I mean? I'm just going to portion control. So it's Gio's birthday tomorrow, which is why, like, oh, man, I had a, 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 a random a random dope food situation we could have filmed that, but you got you to gotta go to your friend's birthday party. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm going to eat this glizzy. Oh, glizzy that shit, dog. I'm, well, def I'm definitely going to gobble that glizzy in a second. <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm. you know. Oh, this is spicy. <laughs> is it? It's a hot link. Spicy glizzy. Oh, it's a hot link. I have a stupid question. Mm -hmm. What's a glizzy? <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the most disgusting. She didn't know what Saved by the Bell was. Do you know what Tiffany <laughs> things are? She doesn't know what hotitos are, and you don't know what a glizzy is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to spare Robin Couch. Uh, the embarrassment of her not knowing who Kelly Kapowski was. No, I'm not embarrassed about that because I just missed that generation. I'm not quite in the Saved by the People Bell generation, in your so generation I don't feel bad about still that. still know it. You're the only one I know that doesn't. Excuse me, my friends had no idea. Your friends are all idiots and they're dumb. That's all right? fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> so Robin Couch, Glizzy, fairly new slang term. Um, I want to say the past couple years. In reference to hot dogs or sausages, um, you know, uh, with sexual innuendo under it. You feel me? Oh. So you would never, you wouldn't just say, oh, I'm going to have a delicious glizzy. Yeah. Because the undertone is that you're making a dick sucking joke. Oh. So you see someone eating a big hot dog and you're like, oh, taking the glizzy? Taking the glizzy to the face? Hey, oh, he, oh you just gobbling the glizzy? This is a gap in my pop culture knowledge, probably because of my veganism. I don't know outside of generational stuff how to explain away the Save by the Bell. It's because you're a loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you want know, to be honest with you? You didn't know what a glizzy was last year either, so. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. It's a New York thing. Oh, okay. Uh, and to bring I'm just it, giving you shit. And to bring it full circle, um, when I was filming Deliciousness with Tiffany Thiessen, um, I was making glizzy jokes and... Uh, the two female older co-hosts on the show, Tiffany Thiessen and, and Angela from The Office, were not laughing because they had no idea what I was talking about. They did when I, every, every time I said glizzy, no one reacted because no one knew what the fuck I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Kel Mitchell of Keenan and Kel, he was he was giggling with me because we both understood the glizzy reference, right? Oh shit! But I was talking about glizzies on the show and right over the the women's heads. Yeah, hey, when we did um. Send foods. Mm -hmm. He's so nice. Mm -hmm. He has an aura of just kindness about him. He's amazing. Kel's a nice guy. You know, he's like he's he's damn near a, a preacher now. So oh yeah, he's like a he's full out like Christian content creator now. Oh, I like that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, I had no idea. Did he ever make up with um Keenan? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're back on, bro. We did an episode of Wild and Out where. Um, the cast of All That was on. <gasps> Keenan and Kel were there. It was great. That's amazing. Did you? Did, what was the reason behind that? I just remember they had a falling out. I had no idea what it was about, though. I don't know. I think it was just one of those, you know. Things happen. We don't fucking know the Things details. happen. You know, who knows, man. Look, let me ask you this, dog. Let me ask you this. While we're on that subject. Um, you have a lot of longtime friends. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's difficult to... Stay working with friends in the industry. Like you're still cool with Bart, Joe, y'all. You know these dudes for a long, long time. Um, and but y'all are still friends. Y'all still cool. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people will say like, "Oh man, it's like it's it's so hard to work with people and still stay friends." There's two things. There's two factors to this, and I've thought about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Number one, you need to have people around you who do not hate your success. Mm. You may all start together, but some people might reach a little higher. Mm -hmm. And if they're not celebrating that shit and it, they don't use it as motivation to make themselves better, mm -hmm. then you're not in a good place, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who have moved way past me and it just, it's so awesome to see what they did, right? And it's like, it also puts in perspective of, <coughs> number one, for me, it's like, if I had tried harder to be successful, I probably would have been there too. Mm -hmm. Or two, it's, I think, is what they have important to me or, or does what I have 
it's something that I want to keep. So it kind of puts things in perspective a little more, right? Okay. The second thing is, it's like, is the person that you're working with too just a leech, mm. right? There are people who are around you who haven't earned their fucking way. And when you do better, they feel bad because they're like, oh, you're not even all that. Oh, let me tell you about this. It's like, dude, it's because you leached off of me. Mm -hmm. You didn't make anything. People who do not earn their way in anything, not just the industry or whatever else you do, they, they, they're they always the one that feels like they deserve more. Mm -hmm. When you have done nothing, everything yeah. was handed out to you. They and feel like just because they've been there for the ride that they deserve what you got. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hate that mm -hmm. shit. And so like when you do well and you've given them a platform, you've helped them out or whatever, they go, you going to take me with you? It's like, well, you were supposed to do your own work. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'll give you a great example. There was this dude I used to do a videos with back in the day. And I did videos with him because he was a friend of my cousin. And he said he <laughs> wanted to do stand-up. Mm -hmm. I was already doing stand-up. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, let's just do these videos together. You go ahead and do your own thing. Lo and behold, on my birthday, about it was like three years after I moved to L.A., messages me. And he goes, hey, man, like, happy birthday. I know we haven't talked in a while. Which, by the way, me not talking to a while was no. simply on his own volition. Mm. You know? Yeah. Because I just wanted, I never got to say this to you, but I'm mad. I was a little mad at you that you left to L.A. and you didn't take me with you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, am I your fucking mom? <laughs> what are you talking about? And he was like, yeah, you didn't take me with you. I'm like, take you with me? Yeah. What, are we in a relationship? Maybe he was secretly in love with you. Maybe. Idiot. <laughs> you know, I, it's I funny that you say... To your first point being like, um, you should have people that are doing enough for themselves that they're happy for your success, right? Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, in the beginning, me, PD Flow, Super Ego, we're all like on YouTube kind of trying to do our shit, right? And I'm going to tell y'all what happened right after this break. Dudes behind the foods listeners, if you have crappy pans in your homes, that means you're not making delicious meals. Well, guess what? I got myself a hex clad, my friends, and hex clads are amazing. They have a little bit of everything and the best of both worlds. We're talking about high heat non-stick and on top of that you could use metal utensils on them because you don't have to worry about scraping all the good stuff that helps your, you know, food not stick. Gordon Ramsay endorses this and i love gordon ramsay you idiot sandwiches you know what i'm saying you dunces how could you are you a, are you a buffoon are you stupid that's my gordon ramsay impression and guess what he thinks that you're a buffoon and an idiot sandwich if you're not using hex clads i'm talking about i got that hex clad walk i'd be sauteing things in them i make the best fried rice and by the way the extra hard fried Asian egg in a wok is the best way to go. Delicious, crispy on the edges, and you could only do that with Hexclad because it's nonstick, and it's also great at retaining heat, my friends. It's time to get people talking about something other than that smell coming from behind your stove. For a limited time only, our listeners get 10% off your order with our exclusive link. Just go to hexclad.com slash dude. Support our show and check them out at H-E-X-C-L-A-D dot com forward slash dudes bon appetit let's eat with hex class revolutionary cookware my friends this podcast is brought to you by dudes behind the foods with hello fresh with hello fresh you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep skip trips to the grocery store and count on hello fresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable that's why it's america's number one meal kit a crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your dinner time recipe rut keep meal time exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every week so there's always something delicious to discover with hello fresh turn to hello fresh market for yummy add-ons and enjoy the season's limited time fall flavors lineup feast on desserts like the apple cider cake with caramel sauce or please a crowd with appetizers like the barbecue pulled pork nachos oh ooh, ooh, and don't forget the mini pumpkin cheesecakes perfect for a me time treat my friends, I love HelloFresh. The meals that I've made with them, freaking delicious. Everything is pre-portioned, so I'm not throwing anything away. It all makes sense, and it makes my life easier as I cook a lovely meal for my whiny, complaining wife. I love you very much, but you have it really well because I make all the dinner. Stop complaining towards me. Anyways, um, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50dudes and use code 50dudes for 50% off plus free shipping. My friends, let's go to HelloFresh dot com slash 50 dudes and use code 50 dudes for 50% off plus free shipping. 
HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. So early, early on, um, after a few years of doing it, when I was with my ex, I entered this YouTube contest and I made a Valentine song for her, right? And I won this YouTube contest. And um, YouTube featured my video on the Ooh. day of the announcement of the winner of the contest. And I won. It was like, I won a trip to, um, I think uh, the island was um, St. Uh, I don't know. A, it was somewhere. An island, right? And so Saint Lucia. it might have been St. Lucia, but it also, I think it might have been an island that I was, oh, anyways, not important. So I won this contest and I remember specifically I was in PD Flo's room on one of his computers when I, I was like, oh shit, I won. And PD Flo popped in and was like, I was like, and he was just kind of like, oh, and then that was it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, that was kind of a weird reaction. And it wasn't until years later, for whatever reason, he was like, man, you know, not going to lie, bro. Like. You know, there was there was a time where I was like a little jealous of your success. Oh, and he's wow. like, specifically when you won that contest, I remember feeling like like kind of bitter about it, like jealous about it. And he's like, I always felt bad about not showing you, you, yeah, that I was happy for you. You know, and he's like, I'm I'm sorry about that. And I was like, Oh shit, dude. First of all, you know, never any hard feelings, because it was always love. It was never any issues, right? But I remember that moment and I was like, well, bro, I appreciate that because I remember thinking like I was a little hurt. <laughs> how how weird yeah. of a reaction, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially like he he didn't even enter the contest. Oh, that's even more weird. <laughs> yeah. But I think it was just that like it felt like we were all kind of on the same level. And then I won this thing and it was kind of like, yeah, like, oh, what the fuck, mm -hmm. you know? And um, you know, for PD Flow, you know, he's always like you know, he's a loyal dude, you know what I'm saying? And I think for him, when he saw me kind of taking off in other ways and, you know, maybe saw Eric doing his thing, for him, it was always kind of like, maybe in the back of his, his his head, he's like, damn, I don't want these dudes to become too big for me, you feel me? And PD Flo, to, you know, he's doing his thing too. Like, he has yeah, so much amazing. shit going on. He's, he's doing his thing, he's super talented. But I think, you know, as friends working together in the in, in the industry, there's always that, potential thought in the back of your mind like oh if my homie pops off is he gonna forget about me yeah you know um and you know and i love my boys right a hundred percent and like they're my boys and i sometimes i feel like i'm kind of glad we don't work together that often because i think mm -hmm. it is different lanes yeah it, it, different lanes and it's it's like it's kind of almost inevitable that when you're working together even when shit's going really well, it's gonna get muddy and complicated. You know what I'm saying? When, especially when the money starts coming in, it's like you really have to be super transparent, or else someone's gonna be like, "Hey, man, um, I want more money. This is fucked up. You're gonna disagree on shit." And I think money can really fuck up people's friendships. You know, when you're trying to come up together like that. You know, yeah, even like before, like I signed this thing with um, a bunch of friends of mine, and I was like, "Listen, we have nothing right now. This isn't worth anything." Oh, there's brisket over here too. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, the thing was like, listen, I put it up front. I was like, I don't know what this is going to be worth, right? But mm -hmm. I do want a couple of shares in this company. It doesn't have to be large or huge. You guys are doing most of the work. Mm -hmm. But when this money comes in, we're going to renegotiate this contract and we're going to have it in writing. And so, you know, we talk about it straight up. Because mm -hmm. I know what my value is. You know, mm -hmm. I know what I bring. But, you know, with that too, it, it kind of makes me sad when I see people who just can't celebrate others, mm -hmm. right? And that also means like you have to reflect on yourself too at this point. If you thought that you were just going to keep doing what you were doing and you didn't expect other people to level up, then what the fuck are you doing with your life? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how can you sit here and be mad for somebody else putting in the work and then reaping the benefits of their hard work? It's like, maybe you should have done the same. Or maybe if you did do the same and didn't work out for you, your lane will be different. Your time will come. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's okay. Like, dude, we've had I've had so many people just like, I think in the entertainment space, move past what I've done, right? right? But then I've never thought about it as like, they don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. It's just more like, damn, that's fucking dope, mm -hmm. right? And it motivated me to work a little harder mm -hmm. in the things that I want, you know? Mm -hmm. And I use it like that. I think like, you got to be somebody who surrounds yourself with people that make you want to do more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you see other people's success as you failing, yeah. that's just going to make you bitter, bro. You know what I'm saying? Work. You got to be willing to like, like find 
find that juice from other people's successes, right? Because, yeah. like, okay, I get it. I get it. It's easy to look at other people's successes, especially if maybe if you're you're not that close to them, and be like, why the fuck does this person get this opportunity? Mm -hmm. I'm funnier than this dude. Mm -hmm. Like, why does this dude get this part? Or why is he doing this shit? And you can you can get mad, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, that's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. Getting mad or getting bitter, all that is really going to do is like slow up your own success, right? You're going to get in your own head. You're going to get in your own way. Because mm -hmm. there's money out there for everybody. And you're wasting time being mad at somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it fucks up with your creativity. Like, you should be focusing on being creative. Like, this dude who wrote this to me on my birthday, right? <laughs> and, he, you know, he said also too, he goes, I don't know why he said this, which was so disrespectful. He goes, <laughs> he goes, honestly, I'll be honest. He goes, I'll be honest with you. I don't think that necessarily you're funnier than me. He writes that on my birthday message, by the way. <laughs> he goes, I just think that, you know, we're just different. And okay. I was already irritated. And I'm, I wasn't very civil back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I just wrote back to him. I was like, hey, man, if you were actually funny, you'd be here right now, not at working at a, uh, at a restaurant waiting tables. Damn. Yeah. I was like, so when you get on my level, then you can come talk to me. Ooh. And, you know, having said that, mm -hmm. it's not like because I wanted to say it. It's just he disrespected the fuck out of me, right? right, right? right and right. it's like, you know what the shitty part about that thing and that kind of like, honestly, I'll be really hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. People would ask me about him mm -hmm. and I would say great. I'm telling everybody great things about him. Even when I didn't think he was that good of a standup. Mm. He was never good. But I was like, yeah, he's a good guy. He's working on his shit. I'm telling everybody that I meet when they ask how great he is. And he's over here fucking trashing me. You know, and I'm like, damn, isn't that fucking trippy, dude? Anytime I talk to you, I talk about you, I'm only saying amazing things. Maybe then, maybe that was his villain origin story. Maybe that's what he needed to get off his ass, dog, and get back on his grind. You and know? He didn't do his shit still. Have you guys heard that um, what people are saying about the difference between jealousy and envy and how jealousy is a natural human emotion of just simply wanting what somebody else has and envy is wanting what somebody else has, but also not wanting them to have it. Ooh. And because envy is a dangerous, toxic, negative feeling and jealousy is natural. You can be jealous of somebody and not feel guilty about it because it's normal to want what somebody else has, especially if that's a goal. But mm -hmm. envy is not wanting them to have it because you don't. Here's, that's, I get it. Go ahead. Here's one of the things that I talked about on my podcast that I called somebody out on because it was like pissing me off. This was a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Every time we would meet, he would say this phrase, and I fucking snapped. Like, he would just be like, he would do something, and he'd be like, yeah, but I'm not like you, though. What does that mean? Like, basically saying, like, oh, I ain't got shit like you. You know, uh, trying to make you feel bad about your success. Mm -hmm. And so we're going out to eat with a bunch of homies, and he, then— He orders the water and the, <laughs> and the bread. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's starving. <laughs> and I'm not like you, though. <laughs> but he gets a good job in the last couple of years. He's making good money. All right. And now he wants everybody to know he makes good money. Oh, God. <clears throat> Fucking George Costanza. Amazing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so there's people at the table who they're not making good money, right? And so they're going to order what they can afford or whatever, whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, they make decent money, but we're at a more expensive restaurant. And this guy comes in. He's like, oh, you should just order. He's talking to this guy, which we know what he's in. And he's like, why, why are you just ordering that? Like, get more shit. And I'm like, dog, this is getting awkward. That's so annoying. And I'm getting like irritated because I know what it feels like to be poor, mm -hmm. right? So it's like for you to do that when you were just in his situation two years ago, mm -hmm. piss me off. And then he would always be like, and then I'm about to, or if he goes, oh, they're about to get the most expensive because we're not, I'm not like you though. And oh, I look God. at him and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I just yeah. start reaming this fool at the table. Oh, pause. Yeah, I start fucking him in the ass at the <laughs> table. <laughs> I, I pulled out his pants and I'm like, fall in love with me. <laughs> and then uh, our bitch was like, that whole night, I got everybody to keep saying this his phrase. Like, I'm not like you though. So uh, people are like, hey, can I get a glass of water? I'm not like you though. <laughs> and then we just kept making fun of him throughout the whole thing and he got really embarrassed. That's great. <laughs> but then I heard through the grapevine, like, you don't talk to me anymore, uh -huh. that he stopped doing that. Ah. You know what I mean? You did that. Yeah, and I and I and I kind of got upset at everybody else at the table too. I was like, you know what the problem is? Y'all keep inviting him out. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all don't like him. <laughs> So why you keep inviting him out? Yeah. And I told him too, you know, I told these like friends, I'm like, I, I hate the fact that I'm always the bad guy. Uh -huh. Like you guys always make me the bad guy. You wait for me to say something, but you invited him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? I think it's like that high school mentality of like, mm. he was a part of the group, so mm -hmm. let's just invite him. But we're adults. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be around somebody, you ain't got to be around somebody. You know? Have some potato salad. It's really good. Oh, I know those potato salad. Can I get a utensil? I've been eating with bones. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um... 
Nope. All right. <laughs> I'm fine. I'll eat it with the bones. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pee, and I'll, I'll we'll get you some utensils. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Yo, look, if you've got loved ones who depend on you, why leave anything up to chance in a worst case scenario, okay? Life insurance gives your family a safety net that can cover expenses so they won't have to worry about money while getting back on their feet. Luckily, Policy Genius makes finding the right policy simple and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help you talk through it. Look, I got a family with two babies and a wife and Lord knows, she is living good, okay? And it would be terrible if one day I ate some poisonous mac and cheese, started frothing at the mouth, collapsed and died, and left her with no money to feed my beautiful babies, okay? That's why I F with Policy Genius. Even if you already have life insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs and it may not follow you if you leave your job, all right? With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams, okay? Policy Genius is for parents, caregivers, and anyone else who has people who depend on them. They simplify the process of giving life insurance so you can protect the people you love. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to PolicyGenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's PolicyGenius.com. Hey, what's up, y'all? You know, every year, Goody Brand puts out ridiculous, funny t-shirts for Halloween. And this year, I was like, yo, dead ass. What if skeletons got BBLs, okay? So I started sketching around, and Rick and Benji were like, yo, let's just use your sketch for the shirt. So I, you know, I made it nice and sexy, and here we go. You got skeletons with BBLs. And it says, dead ass, welcome to BB hell, get it? And guess what? Oh, so lit, all right? For every purchase of this shirt, you get an entry to win my actual sketches signed and everything, all right? So you have until, they're literally available right now, goodybrand.com. You have until October 20th to be eligible for the contest. Check it out, get you a shirt. We also have these hilarious Monster Smash t-shirts that Rick came up with, amazing. Goodybrand.com, check it out. Hilarious t-shirts for the holiday, uh, Halloween season. Ya bitch! Uh, Robin Couch just asked if David and me, if, if I, if David and I, if David and I were friends. No, it's we and David and me. <laughs> if, dumb, if me and David's wee-wees were, <laughs> <laughs> were together, um, if me and David were friends when we started working together and no, we, we kind of bonded through working together. Um, I think we've shared the story before of how like, you know, I didn't really like David when I first met him. <laughs> It's not that I didn't like him. It's just that like. <laughs> Two it, similar people in one room. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was a lot of energy. And I was like, God, who is this dude? God, he keeps making jokes. Uh, relax. <laughs> uh, this guy fucking flirting with everybody on set, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> um, trying to get his dick sucked by everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Probably. You know, probably because, uh, you know, we're there with little Crazy and little Crazy, you know, fucking sexy ass little boy. So I was, you know, just trying to get some action, you know? <laughs> That boy. <laughs> that fool pissed me off whenever I met him. Little Christ? Yeah. What'd he do? Like, this guy hits me up. And I've heard of him through, like, all the YouTube stuff. He goes, oh, yeah, I just wanted to meet you and then, you know, chop it up. Come through. It's the set of his music video. Oh. <laughs> and I don't think he knew me like that. And it's like, guy. And I just remember, like, you know, Madge was there. He's like, you're heated, aren't you? Was, yeah, I want to go in there. I want to beat his fucking ass. Like, I just want, I want to, like, smash his fucking face in. Because I hate dishonesty. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I just told you how much I hate fucking lying. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. this guy lied. He's a, you could have just asked for me to be in the video. I would have done it either way, That's guy. That's so funny. That's funny that you say that because I remember feeling like it is random that they have this comedian here and you weren't even there to do anything. You're just background. Yeah, and I was like, why couldn't you just say what's up, bro? Like, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> that was his way of, like, getting me in the video. And yeah. I'm like... I don't like being lied to. You know? <laughs> well, like, he turned out to be a pretty nice guy, but it was like, I just remember just, like, fucking boiling and that's I'm like, so funny and i just kept thinking in my head i was like so if you sock this dude up here <laughs> what's gonna happen you know I mean? think thinking back on it now and now after knowing you i mean you probably were making mad jokes just because you were like agitated and uncomfortable oh very agitated uh, yeah wow i was irritated as fuck that's the first time i met gina darling too i think you rolled up there either with her oh, or like i forget yeah yeah, yeah. 
I was pretty fucking irritated that day. I was like mad. <laughs> and I was like, you fucking lied to me, man. That's funny, dog. I yeah. just didn't understand why. You know, if you were just like, hey, I have this video. Like, I want to meet you, but I'd like to be in the... What, what would I have said? Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I already told him, like, I knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I would have rolled it. It would have been a quick little... It was fast, too. I just like, oh, you made me so mad, dude. That was I was funny. like... funny. Well, shit, man. I was going to choke his ass out that day. That would have been good content. It would have, but would have been good vlog content. Oh, he would have just profited. He would have had his video up. <laughs> hey, get this footage! I'm just like stomping him in the face. Yeah, I remember. You know, we met on that video, and then we had, and then through other shit, you know, we became cool through through JK. We became cool, and then um, a couple other random things. But it was really through Send Foods where it was like, oh, we're friends now. <laughs> 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 you know, like the biggest sign for me is like. Well, sometimes I make jokes, right? <laughs> I have like no filter. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people just get put off by it. They don't know how to react. Yeah. And he was laughing. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, we have the same sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, dog. I, 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 don't, I, I think, you know, because, okay, so uh, a lot of y'all may already know this, but, you know, Send Foods was originally supposed to be me with a different guest every episode. And then I asked the peoples after the first episode because it went so great. I'm like, hey. Who do you want on the next episode? Or should I just keep doing it with David? And all the comments were, oh my God, you and David, keep doing it with David. I was like, all right, fuck it, man. Are you down? Let's get it. And then we did uh, I'm probably like a handful, 10 more episodes before Thrillist picked it up, which gave us the opportunity to travel all over the country, getting paid mm -hmm. to eat and drink and bond. And bond. Here's where I knew it was like we were cool because I think one of the second, one of the few episodes we did were independently. It's like we had to drive to San Diego and then you and me were just chopping it up the whole time and you weren't like annoying. Like we didn't get on each other's nerves. We were just chopping it up, just laughing and shit. I'm like, okay, okay, I fuck with this guy. <laughs> you know, we could do this shit, you know? Mm -hmm. There's definitely these moments where sometimes like people just click, right? And other times like you got to work on the friendship. Mm -hmm. I'm at a stage in my life, I don't want to work on any friendship. It's What's the point? <laughs> yeah. What is the point? We got good people in our lives. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else comes in, it's such a great added bonus. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then like, that's why I always joke. When Chia first met me, I had already lost like 80 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she didn't know I was huge. Right, right, right. right. And so uh, even my introduction to her, I, I, the first time I met her was at this uni spot in the, the west side. That's right, in Torrance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this girl's fucking funny mm -hmm. as hell. Yeah, I forget why. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I had like, they had invited me to come pull up and eat. And I took Chia and I was like, shit, man, I know David. I was like, who else would enjoy this shit? I don't even know if we were doing Send Foods yet at that point. I think we were just eating. Yeah. 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 I think we were just chilling. And I met, that's when I first met Chia. Mm -hmm. I, you, at that point, a lot of people hadn't met Chia. Yeah, I kind of kept her under wraps, you know? Also, Chia doesn't fuck with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, she does, she's, she's also not somebody who's like desires to, not only, um, she has the same mentality, like what? Like, what for? Why, why am I going to go out looking for new friends? It's like, I'm, I'm cool. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? She doesn't even like going out. Yeah. Secondly, and I was just talking to Rick about this, because he's interacted with, with certain people who come to L.A. And, you know, it's easy to get caught up in that L.A. lifestyle and feel like you have to keep up a certain image and go to certain places and do certain things. And a lot of people kind of get lost in that. Um, Chia, what a blessing for me to find a girl who could be a music video girl mm -hmm. in LA, but has no desire to fucking post from the fancy restaurants or go to a fucking rooftop party and like mm -hmm. post pictures and shit. You know, Chia is complete opposite of what you would think of like a Hollywood girl is. She's not trying to be in the scene. She's not trying to be at the poppin' nightclubs. She kind of like finds it very irritating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like so, I, I think that's why... I love my wife so much, mm -hmm. right? And my, one of my biggest things was before I ended up in a serious relationship, and she knew this too, is like, I cannot be with somebody who is a, a, a celebrity because mm -hmm. our jobs are now too similar. Mm. And also too, it's like, I'm looking for peace at home. And if everything is content 24 seven, and it's like, you're worried about this exterior thing, you can't be with me. Because even for me, I don't care about the exterior thing. You know, you know what I'm saying? So like mm -hmm. for her, she tried doing like influencer stuff here there for like brand deals. She mm -hmm. did it and she made a good amount of money, but she's like, I hate this. She's yeah. like, I fucking hate this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, 
you don't have to do this. Yeah. But it was it was nice. She was like, you know, it was fun while I did it for like half half a year. Mm-hmm. But she goes, this is this lifestyle is not for me. I don't care about sharing my thoughts and ideas like this all the time. <laughs> right. So I'm like, I get it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah. For me, it's hard. She is completely over it, over it, like sharing all the time too. She really kind of just does the brand deals when they pop up because, of course, you know. Easy money. Mm-hmm. She she was telling me the other day. She's like, yeah, I re-recorded something the other day because David was making fun of me for how how I sounded in my stories. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So she was doing this thing where you could tell like she forgot to say something. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, dude, they made me add this at the yeah. end. I know it doesn't make sense. It would like, <laughs> be like, hey guys, thanks for watching. And there's like a random pause. Make sure that you go. <laughs> I just busted up laughing so hard. This is one ad that she did, <laughs> which is great. Most people wouldn't notice this, but you know, because we create content, I see it. Yeah. I'm like, this bitch reading off a teleprompter. So <laughs> I was, cr- I have it saved because it made me laugh so hard. Mm. Shout out to you, bro. You put us on that teleprompter app. It's such a fucking clutch game changer, dog. Mm-hmm. And I'm so good at at pretending like I'm not reading. You know, um, usually. Yeah, it doesn't uh, look like you're reading it at all. Yeah, it's great. It's great. So David put us onto this teleprompter app where. You know, sometimes it's difficult when you're doing these ad reads or these like sponsored posts and they have such a long prompt for you and you're supposed to be talking to the camera and shit. It's a it's I've had so many like, oh, I got to go back and do it in bits and edit it. But this teleprompter app is lit. It's on your phone. You fucking set how slow or how fast and you can just like read it. I usually my cheat code is um, I spend most of it. Not even looking at the camera. I'm like talking all over the place. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I do glance at the words, you can't even tell. Mm-hmm. It's smart. Like when we do it, and it's also in, in our own words and fashion, it's just we just have to make sure that the brand gets what they want, mm-hmm. right? And I just don't want to do jump cuts with it. It looks very insincere. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to be sincere when I say these things, but I have to add the things that they need. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so like when you teleprompt it, it's like, oh, I still wrote this. This is still my words, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. now it's just a lot more clean. Bro, someone told me I was doing some teleprompter shit for something one day, and they were like, and they were like, yo, one take, that was great. Because teleprompter is not easy, right? No, I didn't know this. But I think for us, it's like a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And then when I was, I gave that to other people too. They're like, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why not? You just have to read it. They're like, I can't do it. It's too hard. It's hard, dog. Especially when you're really doing the fucking shits where you got to look into the camera and the teleprompter's on the shit. Because, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to read and you can't control the speed. And so mm-hmm. one time I was doing something, I killed the shit, one take. And they were like, yo, that was great. I'm like, yeah, what's up, baby? I'm Mario Lopez in this bitch, right? Because uh-huh. he's always doing that type of shit. And they were like, hey, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's not the best. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> but I was like, well, yo, but his dimples and his cheekbones, though. Oh, uh, no. He, that fool definitely getting fetuses somewhere <laughs> and injecting it to his skin. He looks so good, Yeah, man. he's getting, like, the foreskin from circumcised babies <laughs> and, like, I don't know, grind, using it as, like, a toner or some shit. Yo, I didn't realize that we were good at uh, reading it, uh, reading teleprompters probably until, like, really, really. I mean, there's obviously other people who were saying it. Mm-hmm. When we went to Thrillist and we were reading tele- teleprompter stuff, mm-hmm. and they were all like, wow. Like, wow, that's it? Yeah. Like, they were expecting to be there, like, an extra couple hours. You know what it is, Doc? You know what the fuck it is, Hoto? <laughs> it's these motherfucking companies when they work with these influencers mm. and they uh you know all they're doing at home is jump cuts or or like a bunch of bunch of fancy chopped up shit on their phones mm-hmm. and when they gotta read it's difficult mm-hmm. because they're dumb they're we are not the same we are not the same we know how to read out here homie hell yeah what are they like floyd mayweather huh? i know how to read i, I read how- all the time Oh, I wanted to ask you about this. Please do. I'm not sure if you've been keeping up with this, and I don't really keep up with this stuff. Okay. But why is uh, uh, Krishan and Blueface in jail? What the hell's going It's like all over my shit. Oh, okay. I will basically, the story is that, um, well, mind you, there's two sides to every story. Of course. But right? the reason why they're in jail uh, or they got arrested, if they even really got arrested, I'm not exactly sure even how true it all is. Maybe mm-hmm. it's all even fabricated for the reality show. Who knows, right? Mm-hmm. But apparently, according to Blueface, their new child uh, has a hernia and needs a surgery. Oh, shit. According to Blueface, um, Krishan has been ignoring the doctor appointments and just like and not listening to the doctor's orders. Blueface said he was getting like basically saying he's getting frustrated. 
And he was like, all right, fine. You want to be stupid? I'm going to put it on blast. And posted a picture of the hernia situation where you could see the fucking baby's penis. And everyone's like, dude, you can't be posting pictures of a baby's penis on social media. That's illegal. Yeah. Um, so I guess people called the police on him. And then um, and then uh, she probably got arrested for, I don't know what else. Probably neg- child neglect or something yeah, like that. Yeah, there's a lot of shit going on around that. What the fuck is going on with people, man? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's you a see lot. this? I saw this old pic of uh, Blueface and Chris Sean back in the day. Mm-hmm. Dude, Blueface had like emo hair. <laughs> yeah, he had like the whole Ellen DeGeneres Karen swoop. Hey, man, look, uh, you know, Long Beach, Long Beach is an interesting city. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, no judging. There's it's, it's a lot of different scenes. It's a, it's a big uh, skater uh, lifestyle out there too. You know, it's a lot of people living there. Uh, best lives trying different things out, and you know, at one point, I guess Blueface had his hair flattened out, and maybe he was doing the punk hey, rock. He's, thing. he's getting really good at boxing, dude. You know, that's what I hear. He's actually pretty fuck. He would beat my ass. He's fucking good. He's dude. good like that. Yeah, he's actually good, good, dude. Like if he, whoever he boxes next to celebrity boxing, pending he gets out of jail, like you're gonna be in for some fucking trouble, dude. Really? That boy, good, dude. Interesting. Like obviously, he's not a pro boxer, yeah. but for the time that he's been doing it, dog, he got. Motherfucker got hands, dude. I, every time I read comments, someone always brings up his boxing. Another, like he's actually like really good. Hands, dude. He's talented as fuck. Interesting. Like, he's amazing, and he gets so much pussy. <laughs> I mean, that's just because he's tall. Oh, he's also good looking too. And he's all tatted up. Just wait till I get these tats. Oh dog. God, dude. I've crossed over, homie. I got my appointment October twenty first. This guy is now officially a Cambodian gangster. <laughs> From Long Beach, tatted up. Or Korean or Filipino. Oh, that's Everybody right. Everybody got the sleeve, bro. Dog, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I, I've thought about it so many times. <laughs> and I just imagine myself getting a tattoo and then another one and then another one yeah. and then another one. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. I got a couple things in mind. If if anything, you know, you, your boy might end up with a little sleeve. And I also <sighs> would like the opposite thigh to have a couple situations as well because I have really nice calves as well as you. We are genetically blessed with those. We are. Calves are beautiful, yeah. So, you know, and now that Hoochie Daddy shorts are so, such a popping thing, I would love to have a little situation popping out from under my Hoochie Daddy shorts. <laughs> Do I need to get a tattoo now? <laughs> because I can't, I can't, everybody's like, dude, who's that, who's that cool hot guy with a tattoo? Who's that pile of fucking Asian fat over there? <laughs> Just no tattoos. So uncool. Well, you've been you've been friends with Barton Geo for so long, and they're all tatted up. What 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 about what now makes you want to get a tattoo? Because you're getting one. <laughs> <laughs> that's really. It. I know I was one of the only ones I was holding yeah, out. Yeah, that's it, man. I know, dog. Rick got a tattoo. Rick has no tattoos. <sighs> so there you go. Yeah, but I'm not as close to Rick. Yeah, it's different. You know what I mean? Chia has no tattoos. You guys are getting kind of cool. Oh yeah, I love <laughs> Chia, man. All right, Chia, I'm gonna hold on to Chia, and then she goes, "Hey, David, I got one." I'm Fuck you too. Nah, I don't think she would. Veda has no tattoos. Q has no tattoos. They love you. I know. Veda loves me like 80% of the time <laughs> until like her terrible tooth thing comes in and then she hates me. She had you <laughs> change her diaper and read her bedtime stories the other day. Uh, she has me change her diaper. She has me watch her pee. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, you know, you're lucky I'm Uncle David. This is inappropriate. <laughs> Veda has this new thing where like, because, you know, she just recently potty trained. So now we're like, if it's someone that she likes, like you or Uncle Rick or um, like the nanny, you know, she's always like, you know, um, I have to potty. Uncle David, take me. Uncle David, take Uncle Rick. Well, Uncle Rick. And like, and you know, I know, and I like, I'll go in there to like wipe and stuff, you know, but she'll, she'll like, she, she just wants you there for the full experience. This, this fucking girl, right? So I have her and I'm like trying to get her to take off her own underwear and pants, <laughs> right? Like, I don't mind. I'm Uncle David, right? Mm. But I'm just like, okay. And then she took off her pants and then she just goes like this for her underwear. I was like, you could do the underwear too. <laughs> she goes, no. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be in here forever. <laughs> so t- and then she starts peeing and she's smiling at me. <laughs> How like, cute. Just, just laughing and smiling. Like, ha. Ah. Oh, man. And then, and then you're like, I heard Tim was like, okay, now you guys like, nope, you're going to wipe her down. <laughs> and I will be in the room so she doesn't scream. <laughs> Oh, my baby. She, I could just hear her pee and she's just like this. Yeah. yeah. I was like, is this a joke to you? Are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> yeah, that's what she was doing. The other day, it's funny because, you know, when she's potty training, right? It's like we want to make everything very natural and not weird. Like we don't want, 
her to feel funny about having to poop or mm-hmm. ashamed. So when I'm pooping, she, or me, or when she is pooping, she wants to come in. She wants to hang out. Um, but she'll come in and she'll be like, "Daddy, my nose smells." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, baby, I'm, I'm pooping. I'm pooping. It's stinky." So I'll give her a little courtesy flash, and she'll be like, "No, I want to see it." That's so funny. I want to see it. Kids are weird as fuck, man. Yeah, bro. I want to see it. <laughs> if you flush it again without my consent, I'm killing you. I swear to fucking god, dad. Let me see your fucking poop, or I swear to God. Cut my life into pieces! <laughs> it's funny because I do wonder about, like, you know, where you go to school has a big influence on who you are, what you like, mm-hmm. how you talk. And, um, you know, we, we've we been looking into, the, like, these little private preschools that, like, preschools and just schools in general for VEDA. And, um, and I have been looking to make sure they are, like, super diverse. But... You know, depending on where we're at, I'm like, damn, what is she going to grow up? Like, how is she going to grow up? Like, what is she going to like? Who um, the fuck knows, man? What if she does become a, come on, dad. I don't know about that, dad. Get out of my room, dad. Dad, this is my area, all right? <laughs> and you're literally infiltrating my personal space, and you need to fucking respect it. Dad, seriously, this is triggering me, so could you please... I think the day that my kid thinks that they could curse at me is going to oh. be death. No, 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 no. Look, I might be whatever that Korean word was. <laughs> that bubble. That, that bubble. But she will not curse at me. Yeah. Or say or feel comfortable enough to say curse words around me until she's at least like 16. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, what's it called? Uh, I have a friend who... Um, she curses in front of her kids all the time, mm-hmm. but her kids don't curse because yeah. they know you don't curse in front yeah, of I, mommy and daddy. You do that outside with your, <laughs> with your little fuck friends, but when you come into this house, it's my world. Yeah. And that's, they, they respect it. That's what I would like to set up as well. Like, mm-hmm. you hear me cuss? Yeah, whatever. We be cussing, but nah, nah, nah. You, you, you keep that shit out of your mouth, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. She's, in, she's at this age right now. She literally is regurgitating everything, and I'm so fucking, oh, dog, I'm at that point, bro. I'm that now. That parent that, like, is so hyper aware of uh, uh, influencing my child, it'll just be me and Chia talking, and I'm like, "Oh, baby, man, what this ish is crazy? What the f? Oh, what the I, fart?" I'm like so mindful of that when I'm around <laughs> kids because it's just I'll come in. <laughs> I always do this. I'm like this. Uh huh. <laughs> you know uh-huh. what I mean? Because I don't want to be the one that does that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I'll, you know, conversely, there was a person who. This person was so fucking dumb where she was, she brought her kid to an adult function. Ah, you've told the story like oh. three times. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we know this one. Ah. <laughs> What's that? It's Pepper. <laughs> you know, we've been doing this podcast for a hundred episodes. <laughs> it's true. And that we tell the same old stories over and over again. I know this, but this one was like, this was like the third or fourth. I was like, okay, not, not Tim? this one. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to change the story now. I'm going to lie. Okay, let's do it. My name is Hassan Minhaj. Okay. Right? I'm going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's 70% emotional truth. Hey, man, look. So this lady came in, right? And she showed me her big old pussy. And I was like, hey, there's a kid there. You don't show your big old pussy. Mm-hmm. And she goes, who cares? Kid came out of my pussy. I'll show my pussy to my kid as much as I want. Valid. And I was like, wow. But it smells. Okay. All right. You didn't clean it nicely. You clearly have a yeast infection. Get it done. Okay. Well, you know what? I don't know why, but that feels very sexist of you. Well, I was, I'm actually a doctor and I assessed it. You want to hear a disgusting gynecologist story? Yes, I would. One of my homegirls growing up, her mom was a gynecologist. And she told me this story where uh, a patient came in and she had these like, you know, these like bumps on her cooch and she didn't know what they were. She wanted to get them checked out. So the gynecologist, she is, has like a Q-tip to get like- Swabs it. Swabs it. And as she's swabbing, one of them pops and the juice got on her face. (laughs) And she was like, be right back. (laughs) (laughs) And then where the area that the shit got on, it turned into a rainbow. Amazing. <laughs> and then she died. <laughs> gyno. Wow. Gyno. Don't let your guy know. That's actually one of my old bars. Don't let your guy 
No. Tell your guy no. I'm not ready. Got bumps on my vagina. Whoa. My girl, her name was China. Wow. China. 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 Paper towels for Puerto Rico. <laughs> Rico, we go together. Ven conmigo. That means come with me. Spanish class. Espanol. YOLO. You only live once, though. Mm. Unless you're Asian reincarnation. Asian. Whoa. Reincarnation. Car nation, what in the tar nation? Yo, Samity Sam, bust my gun, pow, 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 bow, like an Asian. <laughs> Eat, bow, bow, buns, buns I like of all shapes and sizes. Try this out. Cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that shit came out of nowhere. <laughs> and that threw me off. <laughs> well, guys. Well, guys. Hey, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. And remember, hundred. if you have something wrong with your vagina, yeah. just check it with the gyno and it's okay. A lot of people have herpes out there. Yeah. Uh, actually, when I was going to Cal State Long Beach uh, and it was my freshman orientation, they said, hey, guys, just so you know, one out of every five people on campus has an STD. So be careful out there. Yeah, be kind to people. Please. Be kind, be careful. And, and you know, uh, there's that joke that, like, uh, that coochies are supposed, that are, like, just smell fishy. They're uh, not that's, supposed to? That's not, they're not supposed to. It's like, you know, everybody has uh, their own sense. pH balances are different. But uh, the fish smell is a sign of some type of uh, infection or bacterial situation. So check that out. Mm -hmm. And if you have... <laughs> uh, Genital herpes, you could just take a Valcyclovore, which is Valtrex, and it'll tame it. Oh, it'll keep the uh, out, the, uh, the outbursts down? And that works with people with cold sores as well. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, Goodybrand.com and uh, SecretSociety.com. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I could have lived my whole life without hearing that gynecologist story. <laughs> yeah, terrible. Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. The dudes behind the food. Yeah, it's the dudes behind the food. That's actually really fucking good. Dudes behind the foods listeners, if you've got loved ones who depend on you, why leave anything up the chance in a worst case scenario? This is where Policy Genius comes in my friends policy genius makes finding the right policy simple and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help talk you through it my friends we're talking about life insurance that gives your family a safety net with policy genius you can find life insurance policies that start at just 292 per year for 1 million dollars of coverage some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams your loved ones deserve a financial safety net you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com.